All right, so now that you have an idea of what exactly is UI testing and different types of testing, let's go ahead and get started of integrating UI testing in our Swift UI application. Now we are going to be following the TDD approach or test driven development approach. So currently you can see that we don't really have any UI. It's the basic default template, which simply says, hello world. The first thing I need to do is I need to add a unit testing project to my application. So I can click on the main project. I can go to editor, add target, and search for test, T-E-S-T. -E and you'll see two different targets. You'll see the unit testing bundle and you'll see the UI testing bundle. In this case, we're going to use UI testing bundle because we are testing the UI. Let's go ahead and say next. Product name is fine and then finish. So this is going to add a brand new target to your project. And you can see now this target is called Hello UI Testing UI Test. And it has a bunch of code already written for you. Now we don't really need all of it. We do need part of it, I guess. So let's go ahead and remove the test performance stuff. We don't really need that. We don't really need teardown part right now. Setup is fine. Let's go ahead and remove all of these comments. Okay. And this is what we have right now. Now, one of the things when you're writing unit test in Swift language or in Xcode is you have to begin the name of the test with test, T-E-S-T, -E or else it will not recognize it as a testable function method. Right now, the name of the function or the name of the test is test example. What do we want to test? Well, what we're planning to build is actually a very simple UI in our content view, right now you can only see the hello world, but in our content view, we want to add a toggle switch. When we turn on the toggle, then there should be a label which will say on, and when we turn it off, it should say off. Simple, right? So that's what we want to build and that's what we want to test. So let's go ahead and get started with the name of the fixture or the test case. I want my test to be a little bit more descriptive. So that's why I give them a little bit different name. When dark mode is enabled. So that switch that we're gonna to add to our, our Swift UI application, that switch will represent the dark mode. When dark mode is enabled, then test should display on text or you can say it should display a text which says on all right now you can see that my tests are very very descriptive so you can actually read it like a sentence when dark mode is enabled should display text which says on okay that's perfectly fine now over here we're going to start writing our test keeping in mind that we don't have any toggled, we don't have any switch, we don't have anything in our Swift UI application. The only thing that we have is the text. And this is called the test driven development approach or TDD. We are writing our test first and then the test is going to dictate that what we need in our actual Swift UI application. So what I'm assuming is that if I say app.switches and I will say dark mode toggle. I will get some sort of a toggle button, dark mode. None of them, none of this is going to work because there is no such thing as dark mode toggle. By the way, the XC UI application is basically part of the XC test framework and it allows us to interact with the iOS application. So. If I say app.switches, we're looking for a switch control. I can also say text fields and all that stuff. Well, let's see over here actually. I can say over here app.buttons and all that. So I can represent a button or get a button. All right, app. There is also something called toggles, but it didn't really work in my case. So I'm just gonna use switches. All right, so this will give us a switch hopefully, all right? Now what I'm saying is that we get the switch. Now we also need to get the label. 
So I would say dark mode text label, I guess, app dot static, static text, dark mode text. The dark mode text will eventually be some sort of a text control, kind of like the text control that you already have. All right, so next up what we want to do, once we have a switch control, we want to simply toggle it. So how do you toggle it? You simply tap on it, I think, right? There we go. So we will tap on the toggle, the switch control. When we tap on the toggle, we want to make sure that the label or this text has been updated to on. So we will have to assert, assert equal and then we are going to be asserting, we are thinking that it's going to be on. And what are we checking? Dark mode text dot label. All right. So assert equal basically means or assert equal to is also part of the XC test. And this is asserting, this is actually going to make sure that the test passes or fails if this condition is actually true. So if the left hand side, which is on, which is simple string is equal to the right hand side, which is a label which is set, the text that is set for the text label, then it will pass. Now, if I go ahead and run the application right now, you'll see that it will fail. And the reason it will fail is that we don't have anything called dark mode toggle. We don't have anything called dark mode text. We don't really even have any switches. So it's not really going to even pass this test because it doesn't even have the switch, it doesn't even have the text, so there's nothing to tap onto. So it will fail pretty much instantly after the test is actually run. Now, once it is failing, it is kind of indicating to us that there's some problem, obviously. I mean, you need to create these switches or the toggle buttons, and you need to make sure that this pass. And you can see over here, it actually failed because no matching descendants were found. Now the question is, how do we get the switches to work with our test? So let's copy this dark mode toggle. I'm gonna to go to my content view, which doesn't even have any toggle or nothing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a toggle or a switch control, and then I will also add a label control. So let's go ahead and add a toggle. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a V stack or a vertical stack. Inside the vertical stack, I can add a toggle button, right? Now the toggle, you can see that you can't really create a toggle without the binding expression. So I need to pass that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and say dark mode enabled. By the way, this also does not exist. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go into my content view and create a state variable which is going to be called dark, dark mode enabled, which is Boolean and initial value will be false. All right, for the label for the toggle, we are not really going to do anything for the label. We're just going to say text with nothing in it and we will say labels hidden. So we don't really want to display the label anyways. Let's go ahead and refresh and see that if our Control now is getting displayed over here in the preview. So make sure that we go ahead and build our application. Sometime you'll see that the Xcode previews are just lacking. They are not working correctly, but here we go. So we got our switch control. Let's also go ahead and add a text. And initially we can actually say the text value is off so that we can at least see the text and make it a little bit maybe larger. So we can say uh, large, large title, perfect. All right. Now the question is that even though we have a toggle button and even though we have a text, how does the test actually know how to access those things? And this is where the accessibility identifier comes into play. The dark mode toggle is actually the accessibility identifier, which we have to decorate it onto the toggle and onto the text. So let's go ahead and do that for the first for the toggle, accessibility identifier, and we are going to use dark mode toggle. Let's, next up 
is the dark mode text. Let's go over here and let's go ahead and put it for the accessibility toggle or identifier for the text. So this, these are the names that we are giving to our toggle and the text so that the test can actually access them. With that, let's go ahead and build our application. Let's go back to our test and now let's go ahead and run the test and see what happens. The test is, will try to launch the app again, obviously, and try to switch the toggle. You can see it's switching. You, you saw that, right? The toggle was switching, but you can see the test actually failed right at the bottom of the assert, which is saying that the on is not equal to off. So basically it's saying that, well, uh, I was expecting on the string, but the label, the text was off. Okay, that means our test is failing. We actually hard coded off, so that's why it's failing. So let's go ahead and fix that. Self dark dark mode enabled. If it's enabled, then we are going to say on, else we are going to say off. Perfect. Let's go back to our test and run the same test again. We have updated our code and now hopefully the test will pass. So let's go ahead and launch the test. And there we go, on and the test actually passed. You can see the green arrow, the check mark, is indicating that the test has actually passed. Now this is great. After the test is passing in a TDD approach, the last step is for you to refactor your test. Now, this test is too small and we don't really have any other tests, but you can still refactor this test and I'll show you how. We're gonna go ahead and create a private var app, which will be XCUI application. So basically we're going to move this out somewhere else so that we can use it. And the reason is that other tests, if we are trying to add, you don't want to add or initialize XC UI application instance right within each test. You just want to create an instance in the setup. So self.app equals to XC UI application. And then you can go ahead and launch it. Now the reason is the setup is going to get fired uh, every single time before each test is actually run. So this is the perfect place to do these kind of things because you don't want to copy this, basically these two lines in every single test. So we have now refactored the test again. Let's go ahead and run our application again. And after refactoring, obviously, run the test to make sure that this is working as expected. And you can see that the test is still passing. So this example showed you that how you can create a very simple test and test your user interface, which was created using Swift UI. Now in the next videos, I'm going to show you a little bit more complicated test, which will have a little bit more complex UI going on. If you like this video and want to learn more about Swift UI, then check out my best selling course on Swift UI called Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is the best selling course with over 1500 students enrolled. And this course is around 12.5 or even more than 12.5 hours, close to 13 hours. And it will show you everything that you want to do with basically Swift UI. We're gonna start with learning about building list and navigation. Then you're gonna start learning about state and binding, very important. Then you're gonna jump into understanding MVVM design pattern, how to create or how to use MVVM design pattern to create a complete app that will do get as well as post. After that, you will jump into property wrappers, forms, even integrating core data with Surf UI. And finally, Surf UI for all devices, meaning I'm gonna show you how you can write apps that will run on Surf UI for iOS, watchOS, as well as macOS. Now, the best way to get this course is simply to use the link in the description of the YouTube video. If you use that link, then you will get the best price. And to be honest, I get to keep a little bit more revenue from Udemy. So please use the link if you want to support my channel, support my videos. Your uh, contributions really, really help and motivates me to create more videos. Please use the link in the YouTube description. And if you are uh, interested, there are a lot of other courses that I have done. 
So try out all the courses. I'm very active in Udemy community, so I will be able to answer your questions also. So thank you so much, and uh, go ahead and buy the course and enjoy the course. Thank you.